Hi, Al. This week we're calculating differences in what are referred to as dependent samples. You will find the calculations this week on testing differences with dependent samples very similar to last week's work on testing mean differences with independent samples. With dependent samples, there is some dependency between the two groups, either because we are measuring the same set of people at different time points, or we are placing subjects who share some characteristic in matched pairs. Instead of the standard deviation for the scores, we are finding the standard deviation for a set of different scores. In other words, we're looking at the difference in each subject's individual scores at two time points, or we might be looking at the difference between the scores of two individuals who have been matched based on some criteria. We're going to square and sum those different scores to help us find the standard deviation, and we will use that calculation to find the standard error for use in our search for the t-score. And the t-score will help us determine if the difference we are seeing in our dependent group samples would hold up in the population. I realize saying all that might not be particularly helpful, and that working through a problem together will most likely help to make things more clear. But before we do that, I also wanted to mention one of the most common uses of t-tests for dependent samples, and that is in program evaluation. Whenever we seek information on whether a program or a particular intervention is working, we might do a pre- and post-assessment to test its efficacy. If I want to assess a course on mindfulness training, for example, I would likely give a test before and after the series of workshops to see if the course worked. Since this type of analysis is so closely tied to program evaluation, it's one that you might come across in the workplace someday. Although a few, just a few of your coworkers would actually know the underpinnings of this statistical test like you will. So let's jump in. I have three formulas on the right that will help me to evaluate the difference between the dependent groups. The first formula will help us find the standard deviation of differences between the related samples. And let's start with this formula for the following problem. The Center for the Study of Violence wants to determine whether a conflict resolution program in a particular high school alters aggressive behavior among its students. For 10 students, aggression was measured both before and after they participated in the conflict resolution course. We can evaluate differences in these dependent samples to see if the conflict resolution program was successful. So as we look at the formula for the standard deviation of differences between related samples, um, I see that we need to have the square root of the different scores squared over n minus the mean of one minus or the, the mean of one minus the mean the second mean squared. Easy for me to say, right? Okay. So in order to get the difference scores squared, we need to just very quickly do that using Excel. I'm going to do equals and press 10 minus. 8, and I end up with a 2. I'm going to populate the rest of the cells by dragging it down. So now I have the different scores between the two. And the next thing I'm going to do is find the square differences. So equals the number, a little caret and a 2. Press return. Oops. One moment. And then I'm going to draw down to populate the other cells. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add up these numbers. And I end up with 45. So that's the sum of the squared difference scores. So looking at what else we need to know for this standard deviation, I need to know the n and the means. So for the n, I'm going to just do a simple count. I'm going to select the scores. And I'm going to do, oops, that did the wrong thing. All right. Equals. I think I still have count there. I do. I'm going to count all these up. Of course, you could just easily look and know how many there are. There are 10 scores. You might be tempted to think there are 20 scores by counting all of them. But what we're counting are the subjects, the people that were in the study. And the n in this case is 10. We had 10 people in the study, and they were surveyed before and after the intervention. So 10 is our n. For the average, I'm going to just simply put it equals. Go to my average and find that. 6.2 for the first group equals. 
the average of the after group, 4.5. Okay. Now I'm already finding something a little interesting in that the before group scores are actually higher than the second group scores. So I can see that there's a mean difference now. So we will see how that plays out. Remember, in this case, we were measuring aggression. So a higher score in aggression would be a more negative thing. And so on the face of it, it looks like um, the intervention is working to reduce the aggressions, but we don't quite know that until we actually do the t-test. So let's do that now. So the next part is the standard deviation. And I'm going to do this two different ways. I'm going to do it the first way all at once. And then the second way, I'm going to break it down. And you might prefer to do it that way as well. So I'm going to put an equal sign. I already have everything I need for this. I know I'm going to have a square root. And I'm going to put a grand parenthesis here. I'm going to take the sum of the square differences, which is 45, over the n minus, and I'm going to need to put this next part in parentheses, uh, the mean of 1 minus the mean of 2. And I have to square this. That's part of the formula. And close that out. And we end up with a standard deviation of 1.27. Let's do it separately just to see if we get the same thing. OK, so I'm going to take just this first term here. I'm going to do the, um, the sum of square differences over the n. All right, I end up with that. And then the next term, I'm going to do the means. One mean minus the other mean squared. So equals. And I'm going to put this in a parenthesis. Whoop. Ah, oh, goodness. Minus the other mean. And then I'm going to square that. And I end up with 2.89. So now I'm going to subtract this first term, the second term from the first term equals 4.5 minus 2.89 equals 1.61. And then I have to find the square root of that number to finish this out. So equals square root and take that number. And we end up with the exact same standard deviation. So you can do it all at once like I did if you're feeling pretty nifty or you can break the steps down and that's perfectly fine as well. So now we know our standard deviation and we can plug that into our standard error. So equals our standard deviation over the square root and I'm going to put this in parentheses of n minus 1. And that gives us a standard error of the difference between the means of related samples, that's a mouthful, of 0.42. So now we're ready to figure out our t-statistics so we can see if there's really a big difference between these groups, if it's a real difference. So our t-formula equals the mean of 1 minus the mean of 2 over, and I'm going to put these in parentheses, the standard error. And we end up with a t-score of 4.02. Now what we need to do is figure out if that is um, larger or smaller than the critical t. And when we're using our t-table, we need to find our degrees of freedom, which we know to be n minus 1. I know we could just figure it out, but just for grins, there you go, n minus 1. Our degrees of freedom are 9. So I'm going to go to the t-table. I'm going to look for 0 0.05 significance. I'm going to go to 9 degrees of freedom, and I end up with 2.262. I'm going to plug that in as my critical t, 2.262. And I can very easily see that 4.02 is greater than 2.26. And thus, we can reject the null hypothesis that there's no difference between the pre and post assessments which lends support for the conflict resolutions pro program effectiveness.
So working th through this problem will help you solve all the other problems in your chapter that evaluate dependent samples. And once you get the hand of this process, it really does move quickly. So I suggest you go through each of the problems and bring any questions you have to the discussion board.